All right, we got our little uh, Bryant Builders model unit out here from about 10 years ago, eight or 10 years ago, and a complaint of no cooling. Of course, the fan's blowing inside and then kind of points you out here to the condenser. We've already done a little bit of work on it. You can see it's a heat pump. Uh, got a start assist on there, a two wire, and uh, the capacitor was visibly blown. You see the top of it there. Uh, so that was shot. And what happens, we started it back up again, and it's fan started but the compressor didn't and what that leads you to believe is that the compressor is off on thermal overload and what that means is the compressor got so hot trying to start without the uh, assistance of the uh, old capacitor because it wasn't wasn't helping very much that it just got so hot that the windings separate uh, causing a well it's just a protection so it doesn't do any damage to the interior of the compressor so what we do is we check to the common winding of the compressor and it will be separated if uh, you have thermal overload this is the common winding came off the contactor and you can check to any other winding start or run uh, I have it just sitting right there right now but uh, it was separated uh, we hooked back I don't really like these things I like the three wire ones three wire ones recycle real fast in case there's some interruption of power and the compressor has to restart real quickly it's able to do it uh, the two wire ones they get kind of hot and sometimes they don't deliver the start assist that a three wire would but we uh, check that so we're gonna go run some water over this compressor down here and cool it off and then uh, she should be good to go it's probably a pretty easy one no surprises but we'll probably check her out and make sure everything's all right once we get her started all right we're running the hose on top of the uh, compressor to cool it off and whenever it does get cool enough the sensor that senses continuity will ring, letting us know the windings are closed. Alright. Alright, that's the sound you hear whenever it is coming back and you have continuity. You hear the sound there. Again, it's hooking up from I just got it had to undo both wires. Just to make sure there's no return path through one wire. Common winding. See where it's hooked up there and the run winding. So we are back and we'll fire her up. Let's see how many amps she is. Twenty-two. Twenty-two amps. What size system is this? It's like a two, I believe. Yeah. Got about twenty-two amps. Look um, up the super heat. Yeah. All right, at 80 degrees outside, and then that's about 76 or 77, probably still inside. So, say we have 13 or 14 degrees super heat. That's what we're looking for. Now we say we have 13. We've been coming down steadily. So if it keeps falling like this, I'm gonna think there's something wrong with that evaporator inside, as far as being dirty. Pressure is not coming down, but still the superheat's falling pretty steadily. So there's some sort of issue there if I see it good below 10. Well, I ended up with a superheater around 8, which was within about 5 of our uh, design, which ended up being 12 with the indoor air temperature. So a little overcharged, but close enough where we're not going to bother with this one being as old as it is. Uh, plus or minus 5 is acceptable, so we are going to accept 8 as our design superheat, and we are finished.